Food Heals Podcast, Episode 33. And anyway, silver has been um, phenomenal. Uh, it basically builds up your immune system. Sex and- it builds up your immune system too. Sure. I just wanted to say that. Holistic Voice presents the Food Heals Podcast with your hosts, Alison Melody and Susie Hardy. Join the Food Heals Nation and learn the secrets to go from feeling unwell to healing yourself. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In real cases, women have experienced a strong desire to stop asking their boyfriends if they look fat and stress. If you experience any of these symptoms, post a selfie to Instagram immediately. Welcome to the Food Heals Podcast. I'm Allison Melody. I'm Susie Hardy. And our guest today is Miriam Hinane, investigative journalist, documentary and television producer, and professional researcher. She is most well known for directing the documentary The Vanishing of the Bees and running the website honeycolony.com. But first, we have a special announcement. Yes, we have a new swag bag winner. Woohoo! Woo! I'm going to read her review. Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> I heard about this podcast through the Rich Roll podcast. It's been a wonderful and fantastic addition to my podcast repertoire, and I find that I listen to it first over all my other downloads. I can relate to the Food Heals theory as I suffered from a debilitating disorder called interstitial cystitis, or IC, also known as painful bladder syndrome. I healed myself through diet and natural holistic approach to my health. I turned my back on conventional treatments and did what was good for my physical, mental, and spiritual well-being, and it paid off. I'm so glad that Allison and Susie are spreading the word, and their podcast reinforces a lifestyle that I believe in and everyone can benefit from. Thank you, Allison and Susie, for this organic, holistic, amazingly insightful content you produce each time you hit record. Namaste. That's amazing. I love that. Namaste. Namaste. And congratulations on getting through that disorder. You know, painful bladder syndrome sounds awful. Yeah. So congratulations on doing that. So congratulations, Jill Russell. Your swag bag is on its way. Yay. So first, before we get started, let me tell you a little bit about our sponsor today, Kristen Lajeunesse, who we had on a prior episode. Please go back and listen to her episode if you haven't, because she's fantastic. She wrote a book called Will Travel for Vegan Food. It's a memoir. It's really good. Susie and I have both read it. We've really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. It's funny. It's about love. It's about food. It's just a journey, a journey, you know. And she travels across the U.S. and her goal is to eat at every vegan restaurant in the U.S. Over two years of 48 states and 547 restaurants and travels 39,000 miles. And she finally completed her mission, wrote a book about it, and she's giving our listeners a great discount. We're going to tell you what the discount is later in the show. It's also sponsored by Whitney Lauritsen, the eco-vegan gal, and her amazing new book, Healthy Organic Vegan on a Budget, which will teach you the skills to meal plan effectively, shop like an expert, find discounts on organic food, and so much more. We'll let you know how to get these discounts on these products later in the show. Next up, our interview with Miriam. The Food Heals Podcast starts now. Welcome to the Food Heals Podcast. Our guest today is Miriam Hinane. In 2010, Miriam's 15-year career as an investigative journalist, entrepreneur, and producer hit a milestone with the release of her award-winning documentary, Vanishing of the Bees, which was narrated by Ellen Page. It also marked her directorial debut. She has more than 20 years' experience working as an investigative journalist, documentary and television producer, and professional researcher. Her credits include producing documentaries for the BBC, Discovery, Robert Greenwald, and Morgan Spurlock. As a journalist, she has written for publications such as the Los Angeles Times, Science and Spirit Magazine, and the Cairo Times. Following a near-death experience several years ago, Miriam delved into the science of nutrition and alternative ways of healing. Welcome, Miriam. Thanks for being here. Yay. So <laughs> nice to meet you. Thank you. Lovely to be here. We're so glad Thank to have you. you. Thank and you. I know we have a lot to get to. So first, just tell us in your own words a little bit about who you are and what you do. So I'm originally from Montreal, Canada. So I'm from the East Coast. I've been here 15 years. I'm predominantly an investigative journalist. 
I love to dig for the truth. Mm -hmm. And I am um, consider myself an activist. I'm in service to the honeybees and everything that they represent. So the bees represent so many things from the sacred feminine to, to collaboration. And they are messengers and, and they have helped illuminate the fact that we're living with a lot of toxins at least in my life they've helped illuminate that in the food supply and the products that the mainstream products that we use so i'm on a mission to help empower people to be their own best health advocate and to also put honesty in the food supply and i'm doing so with my startup which is a magazine and a marketplace and it's called honeycolony.com so it's it's colony as opposed to honeycomb because a lot of people uh, confuse it mm. as of late especially this year i've spent a lot of time traveling and wherever i go i'm gathering information about the food supply about um, pesticides and chemicals and and just like i was just in greece and and did a cover story on the situation with the honeybees and colony collapse in, in greece and so forth so I'm, I'm also have been described as eccentric <laughs> and um, yeah that's that's who I am I'm a dancer I'm a yogi and uh, I love to live a holistic life and uh, that's awesome as do we Susie and I love yes, to live do. a holistic life and we both saw your film and we really appreciate everything that you're doing and your website is amazing to get people really the knowledge information they need because there's so much misinformation out there so as soon as you start you start diving into the holistic health realm and google will give you everything you ever needed to know and more and you're like i don't know where to start so a website like yours is a great place to really like cut out the bullshit right yeah. and really find what is important to shop for what what are good products what are not good products what are good things you can do what are good what are bad things you think are good yeah. right that yeah. you can do but tell us about let's start with a film because i feel like the premise of that film and the conclusion that you draw is so important and a lot of people even though it was made in 2010 right it came out in 2010 yeah uh, it, it came out a year prior or two years prior i don't recall anymore in the uk okay and we recut it we had a, a British actress, Amelia Fox, and I found it too BBC-ish uh -huh. and wanted to make it a little bit more uh, US-centric, uh -huh. so we recut it with Ellen Page. Mm -hmm. And um, I tell people, because, I, like for instance, I just had a screening yesterday in Los Angeles, and, and typically a documentary has a certain shelf life. Mm -hmm. It's not evergreen. H however, I tell people that ironically, my film is still alive because the bees are still dying. Yeah. And uh, I still talk to people on a regular basis that don't know the bees are, are disappearing. And, and so there's still so much education to be had. However, if I look at where we were in 2007 when we first started filming, because it took us five years, George mm -hmm. Langworthy and I, um, and where we are now... I mean, just last week, we legalized beekeeping in Los Angeles for urban beekeepers. Awesome. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, th that's I something. Want bees. Yes. <laughs> you can have that. And I have a yard now. It's actually yeah. feasible. I'm not in an apartment anymore. So. No, absolutely have them. It's it's lovely to have bees. So we, we are making progress. This is not like, a, you know, the, the food movement is not a passing fad. No. It's here to stay, and it's, it's always good gaining momentum and it's just about education and uh, hopefully people don't need to have like a health scare or some type of tragedy in order to awaken a and I find that you know one of the reasons why we, we created Honey Colony is because there has to be a lot of education that goes goes with uh, consumer purchasing for, for instance like we have a, a deodorant that's non-toxic well I can't just tell someone hey you can't use your dial or your secret or whatever because it's going to give you cancer people don't get it they they need to be educated so we put out these campaigns that are, are really full of knowledge so that someone understands why this product that we're selling is superior right people think that just because it's on the shelves then it's safe yeah right mm -hmm. and they and they put the warnings on there you can always read them 
and you can look up the ingredients, ingredients. that are that are toxic yeah. that do cause Aluminum. cancer mm-hmm. and pe- but people kind of turn a blind eye you know they just want to have tunnel vision and be like no no it's on the, sel- the shelf it must be safe for me yeah, yeah so th- there has to be also an approach i guess in in you can't tell someone what to do you, you have to just kind of either lead by example and be the change as i say or just present emphasis them. Emphasis on B. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Always emphasis the on B. <laughs> but I find you can't like, um, like recently I was, um, I, I, I went on a date and I went into the guy's bathroom and, and he had like the, he had the bath, uh, like poison, poison for cleaner, cleaner for, you know, taking the mold out in the shower where mm. he, so I was like, hey, you know, I wouldn't, I, I would remove that if I were you or you know I had to tell him about his the milk that he's using that's full of like hormones and yeah. antibiotics and and I actually dumped it out into the sink yeah good and for you yeah but it was back there you know in a week so it's it's like yeah it's it's you have to just kind of do it slowly and someone has to be open to it because mm-hmm. they don't get it necessarily yeah it takes time to it's like leading by example and hoping that you know the people that matter will follow yes but yeah. tell us really about for anyone who hasn't seen this film or doesn't know exactly the connection between the honeybees the environment the food system everything like that tell us a little bit about that without giving everything away because we want you to go see the film sure. if you haven't seen it it's on netflix right yes and it's on, um it's on itunes as well okay great so they can purchase it on iTunes. yes okay yes. So, in a nutshell, um, we follow two beekeepers, two commercial beekeepers, and through their eyes, we learn about colony collapse disorder, which very much started as a mystery, and uh, find out about the bees pollinate one in every three bites of the food that we eat, which is something I personally, when I started, didn't know all of this about honeybees. I didn't know. Most people don't. No. So one third of the food that we eat yes. is because of the bees, because yes. of pollination. Everything from avocados to zucchinis um, are because of the bees and their pollination skills. And there are obviously a lot of other pollinators that are also dying. It just so happens that honeybees are kind of like the poster insect because they're really good at their job. Yeah, it's either I mean from your film, <laughs> it's either plants are pollinated either from the wind, which is completely happenstance it's just random or the bees which very specifically go to you Mm -hmm. know specific plants and flowers and 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 this was astounding this is a fact i remembered from watching your film that they can visit up to a hundred thousand flowers a day yeah that's a lot of work that's a lot of pollination (laughs) so they are bringing they are literally you know pollinating plants and allowing yes. reproduction and fruit yes and vegetables uh, h- however there are native bees that are also dying there's bats that pollinate there's wasps that pollinate there, there's hummingbirds there's uh, you know there's a lot of other pollinators that are also dying just just to mention just to mention that so, so the bees don't get all the credit but they get no, a good portion they get of it. the the main credit mm-hmm. in my book <laughs> um and so through them, we, we learned that these new fangled pesticides, systemic pesticides, which are either entrenched in the soil or seeded on the on, on, coated on the seed, so it uptakes into the plant, so the plant itself is, is poisonous. So these new types of pesticides, which are nicotine-based, they're neurotoxins, are at the root of colony collapse disorder. They compromise the immune system of the bee, and so then they fall prey to the viruses or the fungus. They become weaker. So there's a lot of, in the media, constant, um, I guess, people that are hired to dissuade from the chemicals. Right. And uh, I've written articles trying to set the record straight. With that said, yes, those variables do hamper the bees. But at the root cause is the fact that they don't have a bolstered immune system. Um so through the bees, I, it opened my eyes to so many things in, in our food supply. And, and obviously it permeated into just everything, just big pharma, big, big ag, uh, the big corporations, so on and so forth that care about the bottom line. And, and even today, these systemic pesticides are still legal because they make so much money. Right. So the connection between... The pesticides are toxic to the bees. 
and that makes the bees disappear. Is that accurate? Well, what, what happens is that the bees pollinate the nectar. They take back the nectar and the pollen back to the hive. Right. Um, what is insidious about these systemic pesticides is that they have sublethal effects. So they will store it in their... They'll store it, and, and bees are constantly regenerating. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't affect the immediate generation, but... The, it takes time. Uh, yeah, it takes time. And uh, so then what happens is that they kind of get Alzheimer's, the, they, their, their navigational capabilities are impacted, their, their brains. I mean, imagine you're, they're flying in a monoculture where everything looks the same, and they just can't make it back home. And we say in the movie that one bee cannot live without her hive for more than 24 hours, mm-hmm. um, which puts things in p- perspective. When I've researched bees, actually before we even met you, I was astounded at how intricate and how beautiful their whole working, their whole colony, and how they work, and how, like, I, I dare say, I, how intelligent the whole system is. I mean, even with their, um, they have medicine. They heal themselves. They, I, when I learned about that from like royal jelly and propolis mm-hmm. and what was um, bee pollen, yeah, mm-hmm. they have a way of. They're completely self-contained. They don't need anybody's help. <laughs> <laughs> and and it, it's a really fascinating part of nature. And they're medicinal and for humans. And they are. Mm-hmm. And it's so tragic that this is what's with what, what is happening to them because we've our pesticides, our chemicals have found a way to just annihilate their system of healing their med- their medical system dare i say that but yeah because uh, because the honey the 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 pollen is is all um toxic now unless you know the source where it's coming from they found i'm not going to be exact on the number but let's say like 75 different pesticides or chemicals in one one small grain of pollen mm. so wow. just to to show how these these chemicals synergize and, and how the bees have been called flying dust dust mops because they really can canvas the environment mm-hmm. and indicate what is out there. So they essentially they can spread health or they can spread disease essentially. And it's not disease of you're getting a disease, but it's you are getting these ingested into your system these toxins. Is that is that accurate? Yeah, uh, I, I mean, no one really asks the question about what what is in the honey, um, but definitely the bee pollen and I mean I w- I w- so much of our food you have to know where where it comes from because mm-hmm. God knows what it's what what's in it. Um, so let's get political right now a little bit. We okay. never do this on the show. <laughs> oh, <Uh-oh. laughs> what's coming, Susie? <laughs> well, I just I get angry because. You know, the people that are sp- our government, who is supposed to protect us and sets up these laws, is in bed with pesticide companies, with Monsanto, with Big Pharma, Big Agra, um, and they allow these to be used. And yes, we get it so that they can have plentiful food, but they're they're not understanding that we're eating it and it's toxic. And it's and causing us debilitating diseases. Right, and then and- they get the FDA to say, well, a certain amount of toxin, this amount is okay. And it's like, no, it's really not. Yeah. It's really not because it builds really up in your body. Right. Your body doesn't know what to do with it. It sucks it in, in your liver, and then things go awry. Yes. And our, we're, we're sicker than we've ever been before yes, as Americans. Yes, absolutely. I mean... Uh, that's a good segue into autoimmune disorders. Next up, we're going to hear Miriam's own experience with autoimmune and her tips for anyone who is diagnosed with an autoimmune disease and also natural alternatives to antibiotics and why antibiotics really aren't going to work for you. And she's going to tell us everything why and we're going to try out some of her products. So I'm really excited about that. We'll be right back. Food Heals Nation, are you looking to eat a more organic, plant-based diet but are afraid of the cost and clueless about recipes that actually taste good? Do you want to learn the secrets to eating food that tastes amazing, helps the planet, heals your body, and doesn't break the bank? Then check out the Eco Vegan Gal's new ebook, Healthy Organic Vegan on a Budget. In the book, Whitney divulges the secrets and strategies to saving money while still buying organic, nutritionally dense food as well as shares recipes on how to cook delicious plant-based meals for yourself and your family. Use the discount code FOODHEALS and get a free copy of the ebook when you buy a Food Is My Healthcare t-shirt. Check it out at veganebook.com forward slash foodheals. We love her book and we know you will too. 
Have you ever thought about leaving it all behind? The job, the monotonous routine, the nagging feeling that you could be doing something more with your life? If yes, you'll love this year's top-rated solo travel memoir, Will Travel for Vegan Food, a young woman's solo van-dwelling mission to break free, find food, and make love, written by Kristen Lajeunesse. In it, Kristen shares her real-life journey of quitting her job, ending a long-standing relationship, selling or donating almost everything she owned and moving into a renovated van in an effort to eat at and write about every vegan restaurant in the U.S. Two years, 48 states, 547 restaurants, and more than 39,000 miles later, Kristen completed her mission. Pick up a copy of her inspiring journey to read stories about the people she met, the places she visited, and even some risque adventures along the way. Now 50% off using discount code EATCLEAN spelled E-A-T-C-L-N. This is an exclusive discount to Food Heals listeners. Visit veganpublishers.com and get your book today. You are listening to the Food Heals Podcast. Make sure to subscribe, rate, and review us on iTunes. All right, Food Heals Nation, we're back with Miriam Hinane, director of the documentary The Vanishing of the Bees, which film star called the most important documentary film since An Inconvenient Truth. And she is also owner of HoneyColony.com, whose mission is to unite the growing number of people adopting healthy lifestyles and seeking to cut through the hype and claims about natural products and remedies. With a little help from leading experts and top-notch journalists in the field, community wisdom determines what works and what doesn't. So, Miriam, can you tell us a little bit about your experience with autoimmune disease and some tips to prevent and to really get over these diseases? Yes, absolutely. I'll start by saying I like to say that they're conditions as opposed to disease that makes it seem so finite. Uh, But in my situation and in a lot of situations with autoimmune, there's usually a trauma that occurs. So in my situation, I was outside of the now defunct Bodhi Tree, which is a metaphysical bookstore. I love oh, yeah. Bodhi I Tree. Know. That was my happy place. So that was Me a bookstore, too. a spiritual bookstore in Los Angeles that's no longer. Yeah, it was my happy place too. I know. We so, were probably all there at the same time <laughs> before we knew each other. <laughs> uh, I saw Robert Downey Jr. there one day. Oh. You know, you know, just a little segue, when, when you walk in to the Bodhi Tree, there would be all the chimes. Mm-hmm. So he had a thing, and because he used to go there often, they told me whenever he'd go in, he'd like... <laughs> like, always ring all the all the chimes. Oh, cool! So I was um, having coffee at Earth Cafe and basically went to cross the street and was hit by a Ford Explorer and dragged um, about fifty feet into oh the adjacent God. crosswalk. The the driver was going. 45 miles an hour and I'm smiling now but it so wasn't funny <laughs> no in that little stretch of area you should oh. not be going no, that's that insane. fast it's a no. very small one lane you know I'm so sorry that's Damn. but as a, as a consequence now, there is a sign for pedestrians and I could say that I helped make that happen I bet because well, there's all crosswalks yeah. right yeah. there it's like a, it's yeah. that section there's of like Melrose there's like two or three of them at least yeah exactly you have to drive slow through yeah. there so oh. so as a result I broke um, five ribs my tailbone my L1 and I broke my femur and I had a metal mm. rod put in my leg and as a Canadian that was raised with health as as, as a right you know yeah. health insurance I should say uh, I had a rude awakening they didn't even give me physiotherapy in any mm. case my body was in fight or flight for a long time and and after that not you know just putting aside the fact that I had to learn to walk again and mm. um, yoga really helped me uh, that I I developed a whole host of issues with my body so fast forward this is what I believe Uh, fast forward after making the film uh, we were in Dominican Republic for an environmental film festival and were you back to health at this point or what what I, I feel I want to hear about the journey of getting oh god there. I want to my nickname is Mimi and I, I've told myself that I would write a book called Mimi's Medical Mishaps <laughs> <laughs> okay do you want to come like, back and tell us the story as just, a separate show 
Yeah, okay. can make you cool. roll on the floor. From... <laughs> and uh, antibiotics does play a big part of the, okay. the atrocities that have happened to me. But, but uh, you know, just infections, ovarian size, cysts, mm. like just one thing after the next. So okay. any case, uh, no, my health has never been back, but, it, but I did do an ayahuasca journey that helped me immensely with my health. Oh my god, I so want to do that. Allison, we should do it. What oh, is that? Tell it. me everything. I, I, do you ayahuasca. not know about ayahuasca? It's no, a, is it the Australian walkabout? No. Because <laughs> no. I want to do that too, by the way. I don't no. know about the Australian walkabout. No, it's a Peruvian medicine. It's uh-huh. it's called the vine of the dead. It's actually two different plants uh-huh. that are mixed together and it's, it's a journey and it's ceremonial. I know what this is. I it's illegal in it's the a U.S. Dr- Did it's you basically do it? in yeah. the U.S. considered a drug that's like mind opening, right? right. Yeah, and okay. I take offense at anyone who says like even Russell Brand has mentioned that it's a drug. No, it's a medicine. It's not a drug. Okay, it's definitely medicinal, and uh, it's hard work. I mean, you're purging and. And people throw up and they cry. Yeah. Okay, I have heard yeah. about this. Okay, tell so, me everything. So, so basically, <laughs> it, it helped a lot with my with my health. Yeah. And uh, however, my body was in fight or flight. And here I was at this environmental film festival, and um, there was it was the last day I was going to the film festival. We were my partner and I were um, in a hotel. Uh, sorry, in a condo in a, that that we were renting. And so mm-hmm. the, they were spraying long story short they were spraying pesticides between two homes and they were fumigating for i think mosquitoes and where you were staying yeah and i went to, to tell him to shut the f up because there was <laughs> i thought it was a leaf blower and in that moment he turned around and he was wearing like a pack on his back and a gas mask and it was windy and i took a so whole it wasn't whiff. a leaf blower it definitely was not a leaf blower no, and then, in fact, he went to the front of the house and he turned it off and it was just leaking the poisons. Oh, and I my was like, God. Um, you know, stop. Like, I was trying to, to gather my Spanish and, 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 and then the owner came and she thought it was very bizarre and we're like, why is this chick going cuckoo? Um, so fast forward, like three months, four months later, I lost all my strength. I couldn't even go up the stairs. I was in horrible, horrible pain, connective tissue every everywhere mm. and thought okay well maybe it's my thyroid and went and they, they're like you have markers for lupus and you definitely have fibromyalgia and they were like here's the antidepressant you know we can put you on steroids and like no 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 and so some of the things that I say that will help is one and I was already doing this but anyone who has an autoimmune condition if you are eating wheat mm-hmm. you need to stop one morsel of gluten can trigger an inflama- inflammatory reaction all over the body. Wow. Chances are it, it eats up your villi, and what happens is that it, it erodes your the protective villi, that, you know, what takes the nutrients. The epithelial cells in your intestines. Yeah, yeah. And, and so what happens is that the food, then the, the barrier, the food crosses into your bloodstream, and you develop leaky gut, Um of course, if you've been on antibiotics, that just uh, adds to it. Mm. So anyway, um, there's a great book, Wheat Belly. The, he's a cardiologist. He goes into it as to why My we husband eat. loved that book. It's really? A great book. Loved that book. And, and he, d- he followed it for a good long time and then, of course, fell off the wagon. But he constantly is like, I got to get rid of the wheat. He lost a lot of weight. He um, felt better when he followed the wheat belly diet. It like explained so much to him. It's well, a great book. The scary thing is that people think, okay, I want to be healthy. I'll choose wheat over white, but they don't realize the health consequences of that are just as bad, or maybe worse, depending on you know your physicality System. and your biology and what was put in that wheat. And the first time I found out about this was, you know, way back in the day when I was just starting to discover this alternative medicine and this vegan, vegetarian, healthy lifestyle. And I had a chiropractor and his wife did allergy food testing. And she said, you are severely allergic to wheat and, I, and dairy. 
And I said, wheat is good for me, and I don't eat white bread. Thank you very much. <laughs> All proud of myself. And I said, and milk does a good a body good. And goodbye. <laughs> okay, that was my attitude. And it took a long time for me. They sent me some books. I kept going because they were helping me with like acupuncture and chiropractic, and they just so happened to do the nutritional testing. But it took a long time for me to realize that wheat wasn't the health food that it was touted to be. And, of course, along with dairy. And so a lot of people have no idea the way that their body is reacting to those things. And that book sounds really good. Well, that book, and I'm completely paraphrasing what my husband told me it was about, so you correct me if I'm wrong, but he told me that it was... The wheat we eat nowadays is not the wheat that our ancestors ate. That what people lived off of for entire winters that back uh, around the Great Depression, there was a, they did a cross-pollination. The guy actually won a Nobel Prize they for hybridized it. This hybridized thing. it. Hybridized it. Something with a dwarf. It was a dwarf version, or that's what they yes. called it. And they hybridized the wheat, and that resulted in a wheat that we cannot Digest, process. Yeah. So it's fake food. It's basically, it started off, let's say, the original old wheat, ancient wheat, started, let's say, with 13 chromosomes, and now it has, like, 48 chromosomes, and your body's like, what the fuck is this? I don't know what to, I don't know what to do with this. I don't know how to process it. It doesn't really have any nutritional values. It's interesting because, let's say, in Italy, they're very much about the Mediterranean diet, and they're very much about their grains, uh, but even in Italy, for instance, there's growing numbers of celiac because the bread is processed. Mm-hmm. So it causes inflammation. One one slice of toast or of bread is equal in sugar to mm-hmm. I don't. It's been a while, but there's tons of sugar. Two teaspoons, right. two tablespoons of sugar is one uh, one slice of bread. Mm-hmm. So why are you eating it? And I've spoken to people who are actually have blogs and and Twitter handles and are helping other young people who have autoimmune who've told me, well, I'm not going to give up my bread. Mm -hmm. And I just think that's silly. That's just silly because what what nutritional value is that bread giving you? Zilch. It's it's keeping you inflamed. It's it's uh, compromising your intestinal gut. So also dairy. Most people that have autoimmune are are allergic to dairy. Yes. So I personally don't do dairy. I don't do sugar cane. I don't do wheat. Uh, I am Egyptian, so those are not skinny people. Uh, <laughs> when I was 26, I, I weighed maybe 138 pounds. I weigh now 106 pounds, and I've kept it off. Mm-hmm. And it's because of not eating that. I do, I'm do. i a big proponent of eat for your own body. What do you think about the sprouted breads, the Ezekiel breads? Are those okay, or do they fall into that same category? What's your opinion? For, for me, it fall, falls in the same category. Uh, it took me a long time. You know, I tested it because it's nice to eat bread every mm-hmm. once in a while, especially when you're in France or, you know, just yeah. gobble. But I think it's it's the same thing. And I, honestly, the same thing would be with all the gluten-free products to keep them yeah. in moderation. They have a lot of other things like potato starch or whatever else fillers they put in. And, and, and if, you know, there's a lot of unhealthy vegetarians that just chow down on a Absolutely. shitload of bread. And I, I don't think that... Pasta. Yeah, or yeah. pasta. And that, that doesn't help. Um, so that's my opinion. If you're not allergic, then, you know... Like, I know people who are not allergic. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they've gained weight since they've been eating a lot of bread, but that's, you know. As far as I know, it's wheat, barley, and rye that were the ones that were messed mm-hmm. with genetically. Yes. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so I wanted to mention for people who have autoimmune conditions, there are things that they can do. Obviously, diet and eating, you know, if you have Hashimoto's or any other, I, I highly recommend. Uh, Michelle Corey's book called The Thyroid Cure mm-hmm. and she cured herself of her autoimmune um, condition and in, in my case I know that I have to detox my liver that it's it's sluggish but anyway so speaking about low dose naltrexone so LDN as it goes was uh, it's an opiate blocker and it was used on people who were heroin addicts mm-hmm. so a lot of the people that were heroin addicts, uh, some of them, I should say, had HIV. Mm-hmm. And so the doctor that, a doctor that was administering it noticed that, that their immune system was getting bolstered. So he found it quite interesting and then applied it to people with autoimmune, 
across the board. Wow. So I had a friend, my neighbor, my old neighbor, had debilitating colitis that would send her to the hospital. Yes. She'd be pooping blood. Oh. It was horrib- horrible. She had a um, remission. I mean, she was eating pizza. I mean, she went crazy and then started <laughs> eating stuff that she shouldn't be eating. But she told me about it and I really needed a solution. And it reminds me of kind of the film Awakenings. Yes. Where, where y- you have this respite and you're like normal again. Mm-hmm. However, LDN um, doesn't last. It's not, it's kind of like a band aid mm-hmm. and it will give you back your life. In, in my case, it gave me back my life in, in a lot of ways. I could go back to yoga and I could go back to exercising and not being in this pain because mo- a lot of people that um, I guess I'm different a lot of people that have fibromyalgia don't want to be for instance touched like I love strong acupressure massage mm-hmm. from at the Korean spa mm-hmm. but most people can't handle it most people are not active um, whereas I, I need to exercise and I, I it's, it's vital great. yeah to me so it's, it's helped me so LDN Um, The patent ran out, so that's why nobody has heard about it because big pharma can't make money off of it. It's not expensive. You just need to find a doctor that can give it to you. Okay. Um, How do you take it? It's a pill. Mm -hmm. You take it at night. The only uh, side effect which fades is vivid dreams, which, hey, Hmm. is not that bad of a... I love vivid (laughs) dreams. (laughs) (laughs) It's not that bad of 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 a side effect. So I was taking it for a good two years, and then it's now lost its efficacy. Uh, that's one thing. Another thing I do is I do um, intravenous glutathione. Mm-hmm. So that's huge as far as detoxing because people with autoimmune have a sluggish; uh, they they're not able to properly detoxify. Right. And I think it's it's also a sign of the times because we're fucking bombarded. Bombarded. With so many yeah so many um chemicals so doing intravenous glutathione how often do you do that it's expensive Mm -hmm. so i can't do it as long i I would do it every week um so i didn't do it for four months because i was gone i had a cream that i that Mm -hmm. i got but the cream wasn't as As effective. effective okay and then also i would say number one do a really thorough panel of your t3 your TSH, your T4, and instead of taking a synthetic thyroid medication, uh, what I do is take, I go to a compound pharmacy, and it's a special T3, T4 ratio specific to me, because Mm -hmm. we're all different, and to keep it monitored and and to change it, and again, I would highly recommend Michelle Corey's book, uh, Thyroid Cure. I've invited her to sit on our panel at Honey Colony, and uh, I hope to be working with her because, I mean, this woman has cured herself. That's awesome. And in my case, looking at my labs, I know that it's, it's a matter of, um, of, of toxins, overload of toxins. And, and, and that's why she also mentions it as a condition and not a disease. Love that. Because Western medicine will say, oh, sorry, we don't know, we don't know what to do for you. And they act like it will never go away. Yes, exactly. And you don't have a choice and this is it. There's no cure. But that is not the case. Well, that's no. the difference, and I say this, I've said this before, it's the difference between curing and healing. Yes. Healing is allowing your body to take over and fix itself given the yes. what it needs. Yes. And curing is just an external medical professional trying to fix everybody with that issue with the same exactly. regime. Yeah. Exactly. I, I find that Western medicine is so compartmentalized and having had this accident and I think they didn't give me physiotherapy, excuse me, because I didn't have insurance. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's crazy. Like yeah. to, to, to have a, a metal rod in your leg and not say, hey, you need physio. So through that accident, I really opened my eyes and I, I really jumped down the rabbit, the endless rabbit hole of alternative medicine and really educated myself about food. And I mean, I grew up in the 70s. I worked at McDonald's. That was my first job. Wow. Uh, I ate McDonald's. <laughs> it, was, it was down the street from our, from our college. So we would go there on a regular basis. Yeah. You know, so I was a product of, of growing up with Coca-Cola and Doritos and all that shit food that I personally don't touch anymore at all Uh, not even to clean my toilet with it so (laughs) (laughs) so um, 
there is hope that's my point my point is if you have an autoimmune condition there there is hope you can get tools you can improve it's not going to be overnight Mm -hmm. it's not like a you know cure-all but but it's way better than taking an antidepressant yeah i mean i I think that they have their place but as a last resort yeah and uh then we can talk about natural antibiotics. Um, at, at Honey Colony, we cover colony collapse mm-hmm. in depth and cover the bees, but we also cover human colony collapse. And, and so when I say that, I'm talking about the very real epidemic all over the world that has to do with antibiotic resistance, where we live with superbugs, mm-hmm. that antibiotics do not work anymore because they've been abused, they've been misused, they've been given and still are given preventatively to animals. More often than they are to humans. Exactly. The, the, the antibiotics were never created to be preventative. That's ludicrous. It's ridiculous. And so before penicill- penicillin was introduced on the market, silver was very much um, used. Yeah. So, the, so the saying, born with a silver spoon, the aristocracy used to... Um, eat with a silver spoon put put their water in silver silver then penicillin was introduced and it was it was kind of put under the rug and the fda has cracks down on people who are making claims with colloidal silver yeah but so, i use colloidal silver all the time and jill tomback one of our frequent guests and cancer survivor swears by colloidal silver for absolutely everything i'm a huge believer can you tell us what do you know how the what the action is of colloidal silver how it works in the body i know that it bolsters the immune system we have on honey colony um a microprocessor that takes distilled water and makes it highly ionic mm. silver so i drink silver on a regular basis i just make it myself because it's expensive to keep on buying colloidal silver and so since then i have been with with markers for lupus it sometimes attacks the bladder mm-hmm. and i've been battling with utis for 16 years mm. and as you know antibiotics is 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 often the last resort because if you start peeing blood it's gone to your kidneys and Mm -hmm. so i was on this horrible merry-go-round and have researched what i didn't know is like there are side effects that to antibiotics that are permanent and damaging that people don't know about uh i i had one incident where i found that i was allergic to sulfa and um and cipro and it, it was horrendous. I, I broke out. I had like, you know, one canker sore hurts. Mm-hmm. I had like 25 all oh my over God. my mouth. Oh my God. And uh, it was because of, uh, I was allergic to, to the... So anyway, since taking silver, I haven't, I've been UTI free for two years, mm-hmm. which is huge for me because I was getting them three times. And in my case, they're, in my case now I have a regiment. I, yeah. I know what to do, but it was related to intercourse and you know so that i'm promiscuous ho i'm like <laughs> say, you say don't you look like a promiscuous <laughs> no, no, ho. Said that. no but i'm sit with the same person and still like have to do this whole regiment and anyway silver has been um phenomenal uh it basically builds up your immune system and sex it builds up your immune system too sure. i just wanted to say that sure. <laughs> it's healing. sexual healing I think silver is one of the most healing things that has worked for me. And I grew up in a family, and no fault of their own, but we didn't know any better. Every time you had the sniffles, you got an antibiotic. And every time I had an antibiotic, I had a yeast infection. And it lasted until my 20s, always having an overgrowth of yeast. And it's horrible to mm-hmm. have that many yeast infest- infections. It's and candida. It, it's candida, exactly. I didn't know what candida was. No one ever told me what candida was. No doctor ever said this could be a side effect. I just thought it was life. And I wow. haven't had one in 10 or maybe 15 years. And I am so much healthier and so much happier. And I don't take antibiotics and I can cure my cold or whatever I have, whether it's viral, whether it's bacterial, Whatever it is, I know how to cure it with silver, with vitamins, vitamin C, zinc. You know, I have my whole concoction, and Susie and I have done a whole podcast about this, so listeners can always go back and listen to how to cure the common cold. But I grew up like antibiotics are God, and Mm -hmm. that's what you do. But 
The thing is, is they have more side effects than they have cure, and we are immune to them. If you eat an animal-centric diet, your body can't respond to them. Yeah, uh, so if I personally do eat meat, mm -hmm. um, not red meat on a, I mean, not on a regular basis, but as long as, 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 long as I know where the meat is coming from. Mm -hmm. um, but that that's pretty sad because they, they and they do use it with animals and, and they're, they're passing a law in California in 2018 to mm -hmm. curb the pesticide, the, the um, antibiotics, which is too far away. Yeah, it's way too far away, but uh, I mean, at least they're doing something is yeah. all I can say. There's also a campaign that I just read about where they're going doctor to doctor and asking them to curb their, their prescription. Yeah. Um, you know. And I think some are. But I think a lot of times that's all they know. That's what they were taught. It's no fault of their own. That's what medical school taught them. That's yeah. what Western medicine taught them. So they believe that this is the cure. And I've had an integrative doctor, doctor who does both. He says, hey, I can give you these antibiotics. Here's how much it's going to cost. Here's how effective it's going to be. Or you can come into my office every day for a week and get an infusion of vitamins. <laughs> and that's going to be more effective but it's more of your time. Most Americans, unfortunately, are gonna pick the pill so they can go back to their life. But then people like me are like, I'm coming every day for an hour for my vitamin infusion, right? Yes. And I'll do that every time, please don't get me wrong. Every time I get a cold, I don't go there. But when I've had something more severe, yes. and you know, it's winter time, and I'm just, I've been miserable, and I've done that, and oh my God, you feel amazing. <laughs> yeah, well, God forbid, like you really do need the antibiotic, and it doesn't work. Yeah. So I looked up, I answered my own question about colloidal silver. This is from educateyourself.org. And colloidal silver apparently acts specifically on bacteria and viruses by, um, and you can look this up, educateyourself.org, catalytic oxidation, reaction with cell membranes of bacteria and viruses, and binding with the DNA of disease organisms to prevent replication. So. Wow. There Thank you. Thank sure. you, Dr. Seuss. <laughs> <laughs> so Marion brought us some goodies and stuff from her line to taste and and uh, test. test. Oh, we're what so did you bring excited. us? So one thing that I brought is a Cida wild honey, wild raw organic honey yes. from Ghana. It's very dark. Oh my goodness, it's so dark and luscious. Very, very dark. And then once you taste it, I'll tell you what the bees pollinate. Wow. Woo. It smells good. Mmm. It is very rich. So Can I have some more? Yeah. You that can have this whole so thing. So good. So the bees pollinate cassava, shea butter, and cacao. I was just gonna say yeah, cacao. it tastes like chocolate. It tastes yeah. like chocolate. You're right. <laughs> so it has a smoky chocolate taste. Mm. And it's very special honey and this company is Sita, which means grat gratitude and Oh, I in love the, that. In the Shanti language. Totally tastes like chocolate. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very sustainable, conscious company based in Utah, and, and, and uh, we cross-pollinate together, and we, we carry their their um, honey. And, and now we're running a special on honey colony, and any purchase over $25 gets a free sample of a cedar. It's awesome. delicious. Yeah, it's so yeah, good. It's it very... literally tastes like chocolate. Like, you could put that in tea, you could put that in coffee, you could put that in a smoothie. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it's a natural antibiotic. Um, okay, speaking of antibiotics, yeah. And you know what? I don't think we got to this, but um, one problem with the honeybees, and I know you can talk about this better than I can, is that some, I guess, beekeepers were feeding the honeybees a really unnatural diet, which would make their honey very unnatural for human consumption. So... Basically, you need to know where your honey is coming from, right? Absolutely. I think it's less so now, but what they do, because they're transporting the bees from, you know, city to city, field to monoculture to monoculture, that it's heavy. And so they strip the honey away and they f were feeding the bees high fructose corn syrup, mm. which has been shown to have neonicotinoids in the corn syrup because they're treated with systemic pesticides corn and also mercury mm. and has zero nutritional value right and so in our film one of our simon buxton author says that it's it's like giving our kids junk food and and uh you know that's not their food their honey is their food right 
So it's I, another thing. I'm going to get back on my soapbox. <laughs> Stop with the corn. Government, U.S. government, I am a citizen. No more high fruct- fructose corn syrup. Stop subsidizing corn. That's another movie that we should watch and review and see if the you know filmmakers want to be on King Corn. It's so informative about... I want to know. watch that. Yeah. Is it a new film? Maybe I'm thinking it's the same film. No, it's, it's probably... Mm, yeah. I don't it's know. older than my film. Five or seven years. No, I mean, I saw it a long yeah. time ago. I don't remember. I'm bad with, with uh, years. Yeah, there's there's how many million of acres of, of, of uh, corn and it's all... GMO-laden crap. Yeah. It's and, ridiculous. And treated with systemic pesticides. Center for Food Safety just launched a campaign to boycott Pop Secret and another mm. a, a popcorn Good. maker. Because if you're eating conventional corn, guess yeah. what? You're helping kill the bees and you're helping kill yourself. Kill yourself, <laughs> exactly. And if you're eating animals that are fed a corn-laden diet, you are ingesting all those chemicals, antibiotics, you know, GMOs. Who, who needs it? No. It's not food. So Mm -hmm. they're feeding the cows poison and then we're eating the poison cows. How in that, how does that work? You know, but anyways, you should get (laughs) Aceta wild honey, sustainably harvest in Ghana, Africa. Yeah. It's (laughs) from honeycolony.com. It's it's very, it's very special and and, and sacred. I mean, a lot of people want local honey, Mm -hmm. but if, if it's a gift or it's a treat, I mean, you really understand how diverse no, honey is. No, that is unique. Yeah. It's delicious. I've never had honey. And I've, I've, I've done honey tastings. <laughs> I've never tasted honey like that. There's it's- a lot of local honey living where we live. And um, the grocery store right down the street has all these options. And I've never tasted anything that tastes this good. So I yeah. will say that. This is, is very special. So you guys can enjoy that. Thank you. This is called Nourish. And it's a uh, organic jojoba that's infused with ozone so i don't know if you guys have come across come across ozone therapy but it's really nourishing your skin and i've done iv ozone therapy yes i was gonna say that's a big thing for autoimmune that a lot of people have a lot of success with is the Mm -hmm. ozone therapy Mm -hmm. do you want to talk a little bit about that well i I can tell you that it's very underground i mean the the practitioner that came to my house you know she doesn't want to tell people her name it's just word of mouth it's it's not cheap it's expensive uh but they're curing cancer and no one is allowed to say that yeah but i just said it (laughs) it, it's it's way more accepted in europe there's studies uh, for ozone therapy so the idea is is that this this cream is infused with ozone and it's so it's super nourishing to the skin which is why i called it nourish cool and it's we also added beeswax and bee pollen and so this right now along with the, the silver healer that allows you to make colloidal silver is our, our our biggest sellers Oh, so you sell the mechanism that allows you to make yes. one on your website. Okay, great. Yes. I want to get that. And, and uh, right now, if you use Silver 40, you get $40 off and free shipping. It's usually $350, and it, now it's 250 minus the 40 minus the shipping. Wow. Awesome. And, and, and the idea is like, yeah, that seems expensive, but if you know about colloidal silver, it's you know, you have this this microprocessor, and you make it at you make it at home. All you need is distilled water, cool. and it's great to travel with. So, I'm gonna smell it first because <laughs> Food Heals Nation, Food Heals Nation knows I love to smell stuff. Mm, it smells very. I smell the ozone. Yeah, I've had ozone in a facial. I uh-huh. smell the ozone. Cool. And is this for your face? Or? Yeah, it's yes. for your face. I mean, people can put it on the body, but but. So it's a little bit, um, it's not totally liquid. I like that. It's probably from the beeswax, right? Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. if it was hot, it'd be, it, it, if it was, we were in our heat wave. Oh my God, it's so smooth. It looks like coconut oil. It's like very silky. It does look like Well, the oil. thing is with jojoba is jojoba is similar to the skin sebum. Mm-hmm. So it blends right in and absorbs. Whereas, it's so smooth. Yeah. yeah. I think coconut oil, because I used to put coconut oil on my face. I, I found it too thick. Uh-huh. And I, I... It is. It, it would clog my pores. It's a little oily. Uh, that is a lovely product. Yeah, it really is. It says it's ozonated anti-aging moisturizer. I love it. 
so so yes this is this is very popular and then I'm, I've created one that we're going to roll out that has patchouli because mm. I'm a patchouli lover and patchouli is actually antidepressant an antidepressant and is also great for the skin that's I'm awesome since you're taking this back I want to yeah. put some on my face yeah please <laughs> we're taking all we can awesome where can everyone find you online and how can everyone contact you or buy your products so people can come to Honey Colony so H-O-N-E-Y-C-O-L O-N-Y dot com Honey Colony not Honeycomb <laughs> and uh, if they want to follow me on Twitter it's Miriam Hinane I'm a Twitter head perfect and uh, how do you spell your last name how my, do you spell your full name my name is M-A-R-Y-A-M as in Mary H-E-N as in Nancy E-I-N as okay. in Nancy so find her on Twitter Facebook anything yeah. else Honey Colony Definitely Honey Colony. We're on Twitter. Vanishing of the, I mean, Vanishing of the Bees is on Facebook. Okay, Honey Colony is on Facebook, um, on Instagram, and, and all of that. And if people want to shop, I, I'll give them a coupon code. You can use Pollinate and get fifteen percent off. And uh, of course, with the if you're interested in the silver, that's a different coupon code. That's Silver Forty. And awesome. Uh, all right, Great. we'll post all of these to the show notes so you can go to okay. our website, foodhealsnation.com, and get those coupon codes, all her social media, and how you can find out more about how to save the bees and how to live a more organic, sustainable life. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Bees. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you <laughs> so much for being here. Thank you. That's our show. Thanks for listening. For all the show notes, go to foodhealsnation.com slash 33. Today's Sweetable comes from Miriam. Raise awareness by spreading the buzz. And of course, that is in reference to her film, The Vanishing of the Bees. If you like that, tweet it to Miriam at Miriam Henein, M-A-R-Y-A-M-H-E-N-E-I-N. You can tweet it to us at Food Heals Nation and make sure to use the hashtag Food Heals Podcast in your posts. See you next time, Food Heals Nation. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, women have experienced a strong desire to stop asking their boyfriends if they look fat in this dress. If you experience any of these symptoms, post a selfie to Instagram immediately.